Hi guys, it's Natalie. Today I'm going to color this picture of an eye that I drew. I knew that I, I know that I've already made an eye video, but that was a blue eye, and I thought I'd show you guys how to color a brown eye. And besides, eyes are really awesome. I enjoy drawing them, and I'm sure some of you guys really like watching me draw it too. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh, the materials I'll be using today are Prismacolor colored pencils, as with everything else I've done so far with these videos, and I'll also be using a touch of acrylic paint. This is just generic craft store acrylic paint. You can find it anywhere. It doesn't have to be any particular brand. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, so let's begin. I'm going to begin by coloring the pupil of the eye. And I'm going to start with black. Just give me a solid black color right here. And then I'll work outwards. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. Okay, right now I'm going to be erasing some of the extra pencil marks left over from the original sketch of the eye. And this way the colors won't blend with the graphite and taint the color. So I, mean, I, I erased it just enough to where I can see it. There's a faint outline and that's really all I need. So since this is a brown eye, I'll be starting with a little bit of brown. I see you guys talking about the length of the pencil again. Uh, hopefully I'll make it to the craft store this weekend and get a new pencil and maybe get a pencil extender as well to tell you guys how those work. Uh, I've don't really have any good reviews for them because I've never really tried them before, but I will definitely try it out. You know, it's really hard to control such a short pencil, so I really need a new one. <laughs> Uh, Kelly asks, asks uh, regular colored pencils or are they more like the pastels? Uh, I would definitely say that the Prismacolor pencils have some of the sim some similar blending properties, uh, uh, close to the blending properties of pastels. However, they don't smudge as much, and that's a good thing because the color is very solid. So, in my opinion, they're better than pastels. Personally, I don't really like working with pastels, but they do blend similarly. Okay, the reason why I'm making this outer rim so thick but light at the same time is because the eye will, well this part of the eye will blend in with the eyeball just slightly. I, I want to do this to avoid just a solid brown line. It looks better to have it transition into this part of the eye. So that's why I'm doing that. So I'll color the eyeball itself after I finish this part of the eye.
Uh, Christy asks, do you use a gum eraser or a regular eraser? Curious which works better. In my opinion, if you're erasing uh, graphite, like, uh, this is from my experience, uh, regular erasers like, such as the one on the tip of this mechanical pencil, they work best for erasing graphite, whereas gummy erasers, I actually use the gummy erasers for blending, like blending my colored pencils because in the past, whenever I've used gummy erasers on graphite, it tends to smudge it, and like, I, I just don't like them for graphite, but for colored pencils, they actually give you a blending effect, believe it or not. Uh, to answer Victoria, I use other types of paper as well, however, for these live videos, I've always used this tone gray paper because I always do colored pencil drawings and I really like how the gray enhances the pencil drawing, or the colored pencil drawing. Uh, however, for other pieces I've done, I use white paper. The white paper works really well with markers, that's something else that I do. I'd like to make a few videos showing you guys how to color with markers. However, the markers that I use are rather expensive, like crazy expensive compared to Prismacolors. So it's not something that's very common with a lot of people. You have to really be into coloring with markers by a set of these because it would, I personally think economically it wouldn't be worth it if you don't use them that much. But they are a lot of fun to work with and you do get really nice blending effects. Uh, Carly, I started getting into drawing whenever I was in middle school. One tip whenever coloring eyes, whenever you color like all the lines and the patterns that are found within the eye, try to get them all to direct to the pupil. We'll hope it's it's useful for like organizing what uh, I guess the patterns within the eye because just remember it all leads to the center. I know that eyes they can have really cool patterns that can look almost galaxy like, but just remember. So, so, Make sure work around the center. Work in circular patterns and direct. If you're doing any straight lines, direct it towards the center. Okay, I'm going to move on to this Tuscan red color because this will help enhance the color of the eyes. It'll give it a little bit more of a reddish look so the brown isn't just so dull. Oops. I need to sharpen this. The tip broke.
And with the brown, I'm also going to be using a little bit of a golden color just to enhance the color. It can only be used in some areas, and while it does look really bright right now, I will apply other colors over it to help blend it in with the browns. One tip whenever you color eyes to help enhance the overall picture, just uh, to create like a pattern within it. You see these little areas where it almost seems like this little U that's facing away from the pupil. Well, if you make little shapes like that and shade the bottom of them darkly to where the area surrounding is a lot lighter, you can help create a nice pattern to have inside the eye. And this can definitely enhance the eyes that you draw. It's just a little tip. Whenever I was learning to draw eyes, one thing that my eyes always lacked was just a good pattern inside of them and good detail. They were usually just solid color, but the truth is within an eye, there's just so much going on, so many different colors and lines. It's actually quite beautiful. Please excuse my dog in the background, she's getting excited over another dog outside barking in their yard. So don't worry about that, it's just background noise.
Um, someone asks, do you create any arts and crafts or just the coloring? Now, all the art that I really do is basically just painting, drawing, and color. However, I do uh, make origami from time to time. However, the, none of them are really my original folds. They're mostly just, I follow instructions and it's just fun to do. It's, it can be relaxing to make origami. Uh, however, I can show you guys how to do it. Uh, obviously, I won't do it in this video, but maybe in a future video if you guys really want to see origami. Um, it's definitely a lot of fun, especially for kids. You can learn how to make these cool little paper creatures and it's just something that you can wow your friends with at school. It's fun. Uh, Lauren asks, do you ever mix medias? I do that all the time. In fact, in this video, I'm going to be using some white paint to paint the reflections and on the eye. However, it's just for the reflections, but a lot of the work that I do is mixed media. I'll use a variety of materials such as markers, colored pencils, and paint. Oh, Candace, these are not watercolor pencils. These are Prismacolor pencils. Just, I guess, just regular colored pencils. Okay, after that part, I'm now going to add some reflections to the eye. This is actually one of my favorite parts of drawing an eye because this is where the eye can really come to life. my paint. Again, this is just regular white acrylic paint. If you do something like this, it doesn't need to be any type of paint in particular, or I mean brand of paint. It can just be regular, your cheapest white acrylic paint.
Well, one thing that's happening right now with this paint is that as it's drying, it's turning pink just slightly. I don't know if you guys can see that on the video, but for me, there's definitely a pink tint to it. Uh, this is because it's sitting on top of the colors that have red in them, and so some of that red is mixing with the paint. Uh, you can get around this though by just applying more paint, creating a thicker layer, and you should be able to stop the color from coming through. But again, I don't know if you guys could see that in the video. Okay, so I'm done with the reflections, and I'll be moving on to the eyeball. And for this, I'll start with my white pencil. This is one thing that I love about the tone gray paper, is that you can use white and it shows up, and that contrasts with the color of the paper, which is a unique change from just regular white paper. And I really like this paper because of that. It's a lot of fun to use. If you haven't used it yet, I highly recommend you try it. It's really inexpensive. You can find it in like this sketch pad format. Like I have, it's a spiral sketchbook. Or I think you can buy a loose leaf as well. Clean up some of the pencil. I might come back in just a moment to add more white on this part, just this one for reflection because uh, you, it's harder to apply another layer while the bottom one is still wet. So after it dries a little bit, the a new layer will stick better. Uh, Candace asks, can you recommend a good brand slash type of eraser? Uh, the type of eraser that you would want to use varies on the medium that you want to erase. Whenever it comes to graphite, I prefer just those white erasers that you can get at like Walmart or Target or office supply stores. Uh, I don't know the brand, I haven't purchased them in a while, but honestly, I really like those. I think they're the same, it's the same material as the erasers you find on the tops of mechanical pencils. Those are a lot of fun for me. I like them because they just erase <laughs> rather easily. Uh, if you want to do pencil portraits, I would recommend getting a kneadable eraser. Those are the erasers that, it's almost like a piece of clay, but it doesn't dry or like stick to your hands really, and you can like knead it. That's why it's called a kneadable eraser. And you can shape it differently, and it's really cool because you can just press it down on a on your sketched pencil and it will lighten the color. Um, I would recommend staying away from gum erasers for pencil drawings because they just, in my experience, they don't erase that well, but they do blend colored pencil, oddly enough. So if you want to blend color pencil, use that. Uh, in my experience, it's really difficult to erase colored pencil. You need a pretty good eraser for that. 
but really anything works just as long as the pencil isn't too dark you should be able to erase it for the most part uh, keep that in mind whenever you want to erase something I'll be shading the eyeball. I'm going to use gray, black, and then white again to help blend. Right now I'm just putting down some gray. And if you guys have a question that I didn't answer and you really want an answer to it, please ask it again. I can't always see all the questions that you ask because only about four or five of them show up on the screen at once and they fly off rather quickly. Uh, someone asks, are the colored pencils expensive? Prismacolors compared to other brands of colored pencils are definitely expensive. Um, a, an individual pencil, I think, can, oh, there's a price tag on this one from Hobby Lobby. It's $1.99 for one. However, I never pay that price because I always use coupons. And if you guys buy stuff at craft stores, make sure you find the coupons online. They always have them at Hobby Lobby and Michaels, and it'll save you a lot of money because the coupon that they usually have is 40% off, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, however, I would say that these pencils, they're worth what you pay for them, definitely, because you get the best quality pencils. And they're best in quality because they blend so easily. Okay, short pencils are really difficult to blend with because it's really difficult to get the right amount of pressure and spacing between your lines on a certain area so you can blend it with another color. So right now I'm just adding a little bit of black. Uh, April asks, what size brush did you use? Uh, let me find it. I don't know what I did with that. Okay, wait, I found it. Okay, I just used a size four uh, tiny brush. Uh, tiny brushes can be really difficult to find, and I always find myself wanting a smaller and smaller brush, but it, I guess it just takes practice with the tip of the small brushes. Like, I've always wanted brushes that just had, like, two or three hairs on them, because sometimes whenever I draw fine details, it can seem that no brush is small enough to capture the details that I want. But for something like this, this did just fine. Uh, Isabella asks, what is the best kind of paper to use when drawing? Uh, whenever you draw things like this, just colored pencil sketches or colored drawings, I recommend using the Strathmore Toned Gray paper. It's really nice because your color, the, all the colors that you use will contrast with the gray, and the gray is a really soothing color, so it's just something that's generally pleasing, and it's unique too because it's a nice change from just regular white paper. But I also use white paper as well, and paper I would recommend for that is also created by Strathmore. 
and I just use bristle, uh, Bristol paper. I buy it in pads, like they come in sets of 20, like 20 sheets. The paper is more like cardstock and it's thick, so if you use ink or paint, the paper is more, I guess, like hefty and it can take a lot more liquid on it, whereas like thin, flimsy printer paper will like begin to feather and tear apart if you use a lot of liquid materials on it, whereas a thicker type of paper, it won't do that, at least not as quickly. <laughs> So Rebecca says, is it weird I've used nail art brushes for that? It's always seemed to work well. Well, that's funny because I've actually purchased a set of nail brushes just to do fine painting. Uh, I bought this set on eBay, I think. It was like 99 cents for three of them. They turned out to not be that good because like the metal part that holds the actual hairs of the brush, that part fell off and it was really weird. but. Yeah, I've actually purchased them just for that. Uh, Paige asks, where do you get a sketchbook with gray paper? Uh, you can find sketchbooks like these at craft stores such as Hobby Lobby and Michaels. I bought this one in particular at Michaels. However, you can buy the same sketch pad that I have on Amazon. I can't always guarantee that they have it at Hobby Lobby because sometimes they change their stock on what they have and it may not be available. but. I know Amazon has it, and it's only about $10. I think there's like 80 sheets, so it'll last you a while, and it's really cool paper. I think that the Quirky Mama account has posted a link to the Amazon page for that, so check that out. Okay, and... I'll be using a little bit of red to color the eyeball since it's not just pure white. Uh, Cassandra asks, how long have you been drawing eyes? Uh, eyes, there's something that I've always doodled on paper. I say I, I've started drawing realistic eyes like this probably like at the very end of middle school or like, yeah, the, I'd say the very end of middle school, definitely. Um, like before that, I would always draw cartoon eyes because like I really like to draw cartoon characters whenever I was younger, but I became fascinated with drawing realistic eyes like in late uh, middle school. Isabella asks, is drawing your favorite thing to do when you're bored? I'd say it's one of my favorite things. I have a lot of other things I like to do when I'm bored. And in fact, like, I never really find myself being bored because it's like I consider the other things that I do not something out of boredom, but just out of, like, I wanted to do it. Um, I do a lot of studying. Like, I study a lot of other subjects in my free time. I know, like, maybe it sounds boring, but I actually really enjoy it. Um, a few things I study, like I'll study foreign languages, uh, 
I spend a lot of my time on Duolingo, especially in the summer, since I have all this free time. I can really like sit down and learn some new languages, like a couple of keywords from different languages. It's a lot of fun. If you guys want to add me on Duolingo, I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, my username is the same as my Instagram name, so look me up on there. It would be interesting to <laughs> see if any of you guys do that. So my Instagram name is Saigon with an extra N spelled C-Y-G-A-N-N. -N. Uh, however, you can find the link in the comment section and the description of this video. Uh, to Steph, I do sell these and I also do requests, well not requests, I do commissions because I don't do it for free because I have a lot of things to do and like this is kind of a job for me. So yeah, if you're interested in purchasing or having a commission done of something, please contact me on Instagram through direct message and I will get back with you. Now I'm going to illustrate some parts of the eyelid. It'll be this pink area right here. Right now I'm just erasing some of the excess pencil marks just to clean it up. Okay. I will start with this. Let me find it. This peach color. This is always a good color to use.
Uh, Megan asks, do you give opinions on other people's art if I were to send you a pic of my art? Uh, if you guys have artwork and you want me to look at it and give you advice or like uh, tell you what I think of it, please send it to me and I will try to help you if you guys need advice on anything art related. I can definitely help you with that. Especially if you're younger because I understand like being younger and wanting to learn to draw. I can definitely help you with that. So if you guys want to send me pictures for me to look at, please contact me on Instagram. If you guys need to contact me and you don't have Instagram, first of all, I would recommend that you make an Instagram account because Instagram is pretty cool. But if you can't, uh, please contact Quirky Mama and they can forward messages to me. Okay, and I'll be bringing out the white paint again to paint even more reflections. First, I'm going to touch up this, like I said I would do earlier. And I'm going to add some reflections to the other parts of the eye. This can help make the eye look more watery if you add little lines of white from where the eye and the inner eyelid meet.
Okay, right now I'm going to begin on the eyelashes. This part can be a little tricky because eyelashes, you have to get just right. It requires just the right amount of pressure and the, and the right, of, just right duration of the stroke. So I'm turning my paper for this because it's easier for my hand to move this way than it is to move that way. If you guys saw my last eye video, you would see how stressed I was about the eyelashes. Um, I feel kind of like that right now, but not as much for some reason, I guess. Because I've already done it before live, so it's a bit easier. And I have my pencil marks this time to help guide me on where to draw the eyelashes. I will admit that drawing eyelashes with a pencil is much easier than painting eyelashes with a paintbrush because it's difficult to get the right line, at least with the paintbrushes I use. I think I'd have more luck if I used different paintbrushes that were designed for uh, smaller lines. But one thing that's nice about painting eyelashes is that it's easier to use other colors and paint over. If you look at the paintings on my Instagram, you can see where the eyelashes aren't just all black. There are little lines of lighter colors, such as browns in there. Uh, that's one positive to it, but at the same time, painting the initial eyelashes with paint on a paintbrush can be rather difficult. I'm just trying to see what the best angle for the bottom lashes would be. This would be so much easier with a longer pencil. Oops, I think I made these just a little bit too long. 
unfortunately. And black is really hard to erase, so I'm just gonna try to work around it. Uh, maybe I could lighten it up a bit. You can't fully erase pencil, but you can definitely try to make it lighter. Uh, let me try this. Hmm. Yeah, no luck with the black here. So, be careful when using black, you guys. <laughs> But I can make these a bit longer to hold up the length of the bottom ones. Oops. Okay, that one is really long. Yeah, I think my eyelashes in the other video were much better really difficult to draw eyelashes in a little recording box <laughs> with a short pencil, but it's okay. I would say on an eye, the eyelashes are the hardest thing to draw. <laughs> Yikes, this is really long over here. Sorry about that. Yeah, this is too long. Oh well. One thing I could do is like color skin around it and then try to use the black over here as blending and as part of the skin but that'll take a long time and I only have three minutes right now but that's okay. But one thing that you can do to help enhance the eye right here is you can draw the eyelashes in the reflection of the eye. And this can actually be easily accomplished by just drawing straight black lines like this. It's just one of those little simple things that you can do. And it does look good. Okay, and there you have an eye. Um, unfortunately, the eyelashes right here look a little funky in my opinion. It's, <laughs> it's kind of bad, but that's okay. I, I hope you guys learned a lot, especially when coloring this part of the eye. Uh, the eyelashes are always really difficult for me, but that's okay. I always learn each time I do it, what not to do and where I can improve. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed doing this for you, and I will see you again tomorrow at the same time, 9.30 Central Time. Bye!